Mr. Mayor, I've cleaned out this town for you. I want to uh, turn in my badge and start a new life for myself. William Hart Chandler pledged to enforce the law in this area and stop the lynchings and the murders. Sullivan has killed a jailer and escaped. How did that happen? We were too good to him. We let him out of his cell too often. He sneaked a gun in somehow. Well, it's my responsibility. Uh, I'll go out after
I sure do thank all of y'all for letting me stay with you. I really appreciate it. I've really been afraid since the talk of this range war going on. These cattlemen don't come to come to terms. I'm afraid they will be a range war. cattle here and well, we need our money out of our cattle not not sheep now hold it now, i don't know range this, this is not sheep country now give me time to get it straight will you we'll try As far as I'm concerned, it's safe in the range. We're going to have to get them to market. We're late for market. We might not uh, be able to make a sale. OK, men. You can ride these sheep straight through town. And if any of the gunmen for the cattle men in fear, I'll deal with it. We better kill this man while we can. Hang him. I ain't standing in your way. You go ahead and string him up. But I don't want no part of it. No part of it.
I said. Go ahead, draw. feel that it was the cattlemen that hired that professional government to come out of me. Jake Quannon is loose. Now you've got to get him before he kills somebody else. Okay, I'll go out after him, but I feel fair to warn you, that's a dangerous man. I can't promise you that I'll be making it back. Backyard now. He moved when I climbed up the mountain. He thinks that I'm going to be too slow to beat him to the rock. Well, let's get started. You kill Mr. Blake, the storekeeper. I got two witnesses that stand before the judge to say that you did. The same way you killed the jail. That man over at Silver Creek. Now look, I don't kill you. I want you to go back and stand wrong. I hear it. If we don't stop this sheriff now, we'll never stop him. The way I hear it, he's got eight dead men to his credit. He ain't no law man. He's a killer. So why don't we just treat him like one? You know, he's right. If he gets enough men, they can get us for hanging that man. String him up with a new rope. That'll guarantee it. He sure needs a good hanging. That's... Well, that... we can do it. But we'll he killed five good men, you know. Yeah, I know it. Get him out of the way. 
We don't need his kind in our little territory. We ought to just get a good hanging rope and take him out there and, and hang him. Just... Maybe we ought to rope him and drag him. Yeah, we could horse. do that. We could do that. But it might not kill him. Maybe Got a good hanging tree out there, though. Let's just tar and feather him and send him out of town. No, I think we'll just get rid of him. I think we'll get rid of him for good. Good bushwhacking to yeah. take care of him. With a rock out by the yeah. pass. Yeah. Bushwhacking good. No Whatever will get the job done uh, is just fine with me. As long as we get rid of him permanently. Well, there's a good old elm tree out for the big rock down yonder by the pool. Let's go down there and hang him on there. You got a good rope? Let's go down there and hang him on that. We'll do it. Either way, we got to make up our minds and get rid of him. He's in our way too long now, and we got business to take care of. Right. It's hurting our business. <sighs> Why talk about it? Why don't we just get it done? Mrs. Hollister, I realized that uh, we agreed to get married, but I'm needed here right now to uh, enforce the law. I don't understand. I worked in the salon. I met my husband. He gave up his gun. We got married, and that's where our son came along. I know that it hasn't been easy on you. Your son uh, passed away and your husband died in a gunfight. But I just want you to know that um, I'm going to check on you at least once a week and help you out with the chores. Look, uh, I appreciate you men coming. Now, what you're telling me is that Mr. Bryan, not knowing, bought cattle in the stove. He 
least being accused of it along with uh, killing the owner. I've heard talk of them having a meeting tonight. We need to take them out of that meeting. Every one of them. Well, gentlemen, I know that it's out of my jurisdiction, but I'm going to try to stop this lynching. Carson, you said that you was fast enough. Well, I give you a chance to catch your speed for his life. A cross draw from the second season. These men catch us. They'll lynch us for sure. I can have five. Well, uh, I know you're on business, so what do you got to complain about today? Chandler, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna hang you, too. Well, I know you're not satisfied with doing the job, but it just takes time to do things around here. Well, I'll tell you. I'm gonna mosey on over back to General Store to buy me some more rope. Good day.
Mr. Brown, you saved the dog. You didn't steal those cattle in the uh, murder long. That's good enough for me. And it's good enough for uh, Judge Paul. Because he don't like anybody in the job. And uh, we're not going to take action this proof. Mrs. Hollister, I really appreciate uh, you inviting me out for coffee uh, each Sunday. Well, uh, start tomorrow, I'll start helping you with these shorts. Duty called, and my husband died in a gunfight. I couldn't bear it if something would happen. Well, I know that you're worried, and I can't promise that nothing will happen to me, but I've just got to do what I'm called to do, uh, bring law and order to uh, this lawless land. I understand how you feel. Rio should be coming into town with the cattle drive. Now you know he's wanted for robbery and murder. <laughs> I want you to bring him in. Now look, uh, I'm not gonna be able to take this man alive without help, and I'm not dragging a common citizen into something like this. I mean, after all, uh, I'm supposed to be protecting them. Chandler, I can't call in federal help for one man. If you're not man enough to do the job, turn in your badge. I do what I can. Two cows wander astray. You've been out drinking, and your mind is on the women, and I'm tired of covering up for you. You now, understand? Now, you listen here. Those cattle were in your area. Now, if you don't stay, now you stay out of my business. God, break it up. Right now, I said break it up. You come at me again, I'm going to kill you, old man. No, you're not. must be Mr. Forrest, the owner of this ranch. I am Mr. Forrest, but I don't own this ranch. But I can take you to the owner. Me and uh, I came out to kill Rio Sinclair. Robert and murder, and we suspect that he killed Blanche and Mr. Jeffrey and took his cat. Well, I know there's enough of you men to kill me, but the problem is which one of you is going to die? You men can either help me bring this killer to justice, or 
bring this down the way. That's just up to you. Two bodies have surfaced in the river. They both had bullet holes in them. Something's just not right. Hi, Gray. Uh, these men were murdered after I arrested uh, Mr. Sinclair. But I think they just said that, just to cover up something. They have something that's just not right. Well, gentlemen, I'll question uh, Mr. Rio Sinclair. And, uh, I just don't think he's any more guilty of uh, killing uh, Rancher Jeff and still his cattle. No more than I think Mr. Bryant did. I think it's a conspiracy between the Rangers or somebody, and uh, the real killer is walking free. That's just what I think. Well, uh, Mayor Harden, I want to thank you and both of you ranchers for coming in. And I promise you that I'm going to try to get to the bottom of this. Look, I promised to help uh, Mrs. Hollister out on the farm. And maybe a day or two of farm uh, work, maybe to help me get my mind clear. Maybe I'll know what to do. Judge Carter, let me introduce myself. I'm Dr. Uh, Nathan Winslow. Well, good. Uh, come on in and have a seat. I'm writing a book on the killer, Sheriff Chandler, better known as the Iron Sheriff. He gunned down John Corbett in that cabin shootout. Yes, Sheriff Chandler's been spending a lot of time in the line cabin near the stage line. We've been having a lot of trouble in that area. So, uh, tell me, what can I do for you? If my records are correct, your sheriff, a man who's supposed to be enforcing the law, has a higher body count than the killer John Corbett who, a man who kills for money. We're not that civilized in this part of the country, so a uh, lawman just has to make out the best way he can. I'm writing a book on the killer. The Iron Sheriff, Sheriff Chandler, 
he is the topic I choose to to write about. Doc Winslow, if it was a law to run you out of the county for writing a book, I would. Because when you write these stories, glamorize these gunfighters, it just encourages us more copycats, and that leads to more murders. Hold it, hold it. No, no, you've got it all wrong. I feel the lawmen like Sheriff Chandler and the outlaw are killers. They just happen to be on different sides, and I want to get inside their mind and find out what's really going on. Reverend Blackwell. Hello. Oh, uh, have a seat. Well, thank you. Oh, uh, maybe you can talk some sense into uh, Dr. Winslow over here. Oh, lawmen like Sheriff Chandler and the outlaw are the same. They're killers. They're very much alike. And what I want to do is get inside their heads and see what they really think. Dr. Winslow, you can't say that everyone that kills someone is a murderer. The Lord was with the shepherd boy David when he slew Goliath. It's all in the word. Slain. What an awful word. Is it necessary for one man to kill another? One nation to kill or dominate another in order to live? King David wrote in the book of Psalms, Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people, and thou hast made me the head of the heathen. A people whom I have not known shall serve me. How you doing, sir? I'm doing okay, but I'm here to investigate a murder of uh, our gunsmith, Dave Solomon. Uh, he's been accused of killing the store kids, accused of weed. Now, he tells me that uh, he was on the river back fishing with you that day, and that would clear. Well, to be honest with you, I get my days kind of mixed up. But to tell you the truth, uh, he did go fishing with you one day. Look, uh, it's a man's life on the line. Now, I want you to try to think about it, think about something else that's happened that day, that maybe to bring it back to you, and I'll check back with you later. Okay. Well, sure, these sheep herders around here, seems like uh, our sheep's eating up all of our grass, and uh, we need to uh, have a little talk with them if we could. Okay, I'll check into it. Sheriff Chandler, Red Cloud and his family was here earlier to thank you for saving him from the hanging. Uh, he said he was sure that he would have hanged if you hadn't shot the rope in two. And I heard that uh, you had to kill a man in order to save him. Oh, please forgive me. This is Dr. Winslow. He's writing a book, The Killer. He said he'd like to talk with you. Doctor, if you just stay out of my hair, I promise to talk with you about this book. I like working alone. Besides, uh, you might get in line of fire, and if uh, you're not willing to kill, uh, it might uh, cost you your life. When you fired your gun at that rope, what went through your mind? I 
I just uh, reacted and him fired at me. Uh, I didn't have time to think. And the man that you shot off horseback? I just reacted and him fired at me. Uh, Don't you have any remorse for that man? Or any man your gun has cut down? What about their families? Don't you have any grief for them? Doctor, uh, any time a man makes a mistake, good or bad, I feel bad for the families, but not at the point of giving up this badge. Sheriff Chandler, just a short observation. I've noticed you have a need for danger, and this need for danger puts you in situations that, in order for you to survive, you are uh, forced to kill. If that badge was taken away from you, how do you know that you won't become like the, like the men that your gun has cut down? That badge gives you a purpose as a lawman. Take away that purpose and who would you be? I don't guess I ever know until this badge is taken away. I guess uh, most of you men know me, Sheriff Chapman. I've heard talk that uh, you men talk to Lynch and me, but uh, I know it's that like whiskey talk, and I know it's not you. You're all good men. Look, I've got a Rio Sinclair in jail, killing Mr. Jeffrey and stealing his cattle, but uh, I don't think he did it. I think some of you men know who did. So all I'm asking for is your help. Yes, that's the man. But don't put the pressure on him yet. He may scare off our new help. I understand, Rachel Whitty. I realize that uh, if the care had suspect a murder among them, they'd just leave and uh, work somewhere else. But I've got no choice. I'm a lawman. I've got a job to do. I know the death of Rachel Jeffries put a hold on the beef contract that you and the town council had agreed on. But I just want you to know that I do my best to get to the bottom of it. Reverend Blackwell, how's the family, thank you? 
They're taking it hard. You need to tell Sheriff Challenge that the Sinclair family means to settle an odd debt. Good day. I'll tell them. Good day. Sheriff Chandler, that was quite a shot. You're right, Doctor. You see, uh, Mr. Sinclair knew that I had been close range to be affected to cross draw. But I didn't take time to aim the fire. He knew that he had me between ranges. How do you account for this heroic shot? I felt at my best. I just had a 50-50 chance of hitting him at the most. In the arm, in the leg, anywhere. Just to make him flinch. That would throw his aim off and it would give me time to aim and fire. I felt that I had a chance. Those are the words of an executioner. Your mind is already set. You've already got it planned how you're going to kill a man. And you don't have any remorse when you go and cut a man down. It just goes with the territory. Well, we got the man that killed Rachel Jeffrey and stole his cattle. Here's another one of the Sinclair men. He drew down on me. Look, uh, Mrs. Hollister, I'm just going to have to just take a little time to myself. I just had to get out here where I could uh, get my mind to. I know I'm going to have trouble with those same fire men. Turning real loose, it just wasn't good enough. But I don't think he was guilty. You know, uh, Judge Carter, you know, Mr. Sullivan, he wasn't guilty of uh, killing the storekeeper, Mr. Blake, and uh, I realized uh, he killed the jailer when he escaped. Well, uh, what I'm asking, I wish uh, you'd take this into consideration and uh, give him prison time instead of hanging him. Well, uh, I'll think about it. Thank uh, both of uh, you men for coming. We've dealt with the man responsible for uh, murdering Rachel Jeffrey and taking his cattle. We should be able to negotiate that beef contract now. The cattle is uh, in the North Range. I've got word that the Sinclair men are coming to town to kill Sheriff Chowler, even if they have to take the town apart to do it. Well, uh, 
couldn't he ask for more help? I don't like anyone interfering with my congregation. If Sheriff Chandler needs to preach a sermon of his own, after all, he's got three disciples to help him. Gentlemen. Well, sure, not too good right now. Uh, all the excitement last night, you've done a great job. But this Solomon, he's no angel. He's broke out of jail again. He's done killed old Ben down at the livery stable. Sure, it's Solomon. He's no angel. He tried to draw down on you when you tried to arrest him that night. He's killed a jailer. He's killed old Ben at the delivery stable. And he's going to keep on killing till somebody does something to stop him. Now you get out there and you stop this man under no circumstances. Well, just another day in the life of our local sheriff. The prisoner escaped from jail. Sheriff Chandler had no choice. He could have appointed citizens to help him apprehend that man. The sheriff thinks it's his responsibility. Sheriff Chandler also thinks it's the responsibility of the men to look after their family. Look, Dr. Winslow, I can assure you, there's no more jobs at the saloon for widows. Well, you can slice it any way you want to. But sheriff Chandler hadn't killed that man and someone else had. Sheriff Chandler would have been very disappointed. Reverend Blackwell, you're a man of God. What do you think of our sheriff? The congregation at the church is thankful that we have a sheriff capable of enforcing the law. They can go on with the responsibilities of raising their families and not have to worry about being in, dragged into the problems with the Sheriff Chandler. I'm still not convinced. I would invite you to come to Sunday morning services. It might enlighten you on some of the subjects we're talking about. Oh, I don't know. Well, let me just read you a verse of scripture. Comfort my people, said your God. Speak ye comfortable to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins.
You know, we finally got a chance to live our own lives. You know, uh, the town committee wanted a sheriff that would uh, bring the prisoners in, not shoot them down. Well, really, I'm glad to get out of it. I mean, we're more civilized now. And it'd be good having somebody to protect us. The sheriff defends the town. The town survives. I finished my observation of Sheriff Chandler, better known as the Iron Sheriff. Sheriff Chandler has a need for danger. Faced in certain situations, there is a need to kill in order to survive. That makes him like the murders his gun has cut down. Unlike the men his gun has cut down, if his badge was taken away from him, the sheriff wouldn't rob or kill. He wouldn't bother anyone that wouldn't bother him. He would just withdraw from life, sinking into a deep depression, to ride the rainbow to oblivion, all the way to his grave. Thanks for joining us in this production of The Iron Sheriff. Until next time, happy trails to each and every one of you.